All right, guys. So uh, Cornell West went on CNN here and talked to Dana Bash, and they're going to talk about the uncommitted vote in Michigan. Now, this uh, was prior to the results. So we got the results. 100,000 votes went to uncommitted, about 13.3% of the vote. That's way more than even the uncommitted people thought they'd get. They were aiming for 10,000 votes. They got 100,000. Um, and initially, the media was kind of honest about it, like, oh, this is bad for Biden. But then after that, the spin sort of kicked in, and they were saying, oh, actually, no, it's great for Biden. He got 81% of the vote. He's totally fine. Well, the margin that Trump beat Hillary by in Michigan in 2016 was 10,000 votes. The margin Biden beat Trump by in 2020 was 150,000. And when you add up all the votes, including the Marianne and the, and the Dean Phillips votes, you got like 145,000 people who didn't support Biden. So the razor thin Michigan is. So they're going to talk about the uncommitted thing here. Uh, and then they talk Israel and ooh, it gets spicy. Some Democrats who are frustrated with uh, President Biden's response to the Israel-Gaza war, they're urging residents to vote uncommitted, effectively against the president. Now, yesterday he announced progress in a deal for a temporary ceasefire in exchange for a hostage release. Should that help, never mind what it means for the region, which is the most important, but just on the raw politics of it, should that help the president politically? Well, we shall see. But I think part of the problem is we can't reduce what's going on in Gaza to some kind of electoral political strategy. I mean, we've seen. But to be fair, if he were to start changing course and sanctioning Netanyahu and doing a full ceasefire and actually standing up to him, yeah, it would help him for sure. Example of our dear brother Aaron Bushnell. It, when he set himself on fire and killed himself, what was he saying? These are moral issues and moral causes. These are not just brands and strategies and tactics. And as you know, Sister Dan, so much American politics is about strategy and tactic. These are deeply moral and spiritual issues having to do with arbitrary power being used. And when I hear Sister Rashida say, well, Biden is not hearing us. No, Biden is the enabling the killing of us. That's what's taking place here. And so you can imagine that my Arab brothers and sisters in Dearborn and other places are saying, we're not just pieces to be moved on a chessboard. These are our families. This is mama and daddy. This is grandmama and granddaddy. By the way, what he's saying is absolutely true, that this is a moral issue. This is an ethical issue. This is not just about, like, moving pieces around on the chessboard or the horse race angle of it. What he's saying is totally true. At the same time, though, this is also good politics to do the right thing. It's not just good policy, which it is. It is also good politics. And that's the thing, is that these politicians are craven, cretinous freaks, and they care first and foremost about, well, how will this play? And like, it needs to get through to Biden. Not only is this the right thing to do because it is morally the right thing to do, it's also the right thing to do to save your own ass, you moron. Guys ...who marched in the early 40s, led by the great Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, and FDR wouldn't even come out of the White House. He sent Henry Wallace, and the rabbis were sitting there saying, look, massacres are taking place, war crimes are taking place, crimes against humanity, genocide is mm -hmm. taking place. What did the White House do in the early 40s? Nothing at all, hardly. Why? Because it was an electro-political issue. The Jewish okay. vote didn't mean X. The Jewish vote didn't mean Y. These are human beings, and America is enabling the killing of them. So it is now in 2024. Where is the space for truth, justice, love in a moment Professor of West. electoral politics and, 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 and barbarity? By the way, you can see now why this man was so universally beloved, <laughs> right? Like, it, you know, running for president, he's made a whole bunch of missteps. It was originally with the People's Party, then it was going to be with the Green Party, then he want to jump through the hoops in the Green Party, and now he's running as an independent. I don't even know how many ballots he's going to be on, if I'm being totally honest with you. But there's a reason why this guy generally had a halo over his head and was viewed on the left as this beloved figure. Because of what you're watching right now. Like, he's just, he's spitting. What about um, the other side of the argument? Uh, not, not that there's any appropriate side to the killing of innocent civilians. We should just say that flatly. But when it comes to absolutely when it comes to, to war and retaliatory war, which is what this is, uh, for lots of reasons, the most the biggest is what Hamas did, the terror attack inside of Israel, but also currently the hostages who are still there. Do you think that there is, first of all, on the hostages, but second of all, just on uh, Hamas, is there do you believe in the idea of eradicating a terrorist group like Hamas, which did such barbaric things to innocent civilians? That's not possible. That's not let's just stop there. It's not possible. I'm gonna let him respond in a second, of course, but this idea is a fairy tale. It's, it's like when George W. Bush said, we're going to wage a war on terror. What, are you going to defeat terror? There's going to be no more terrorism? That's not possible. It's not a thing. You're going to defeat Hamas? Well, guess what? Then Hamas 2.0 is going to come out. Hamas is just hardline Palestinians who are fighting back. You're creating more of them by the day by killing so many grandmas and grandpas and mothers and infants and toddlers and kids. You're creating more. 
So the, it's it's they set they set an impossible standard so that they have a justification for endless war. That's why they're doing it. Well, one, I mean, you and I know that a Jewish life has exactly the same value as a Palestinian life. A Palestinian baby has the same value as a Jewish baby. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do you get at the roots of it? Anytime you kill an innocent person, that is a crime against humanity. Did Hamas commit war crimes? Absolutely. Murder is murder. But at the same time, you and I also know that you, the root of what we're talking about here is an ugly occupation, is an embargo and siege, and then we can call for a ceasefire. So in calling for a ceasefire, it ought to be on the way to get at the roots of the problem, which is the ending of an occupation, so you can then have forms of resistance that don't have to take the form of killing innocent people. Now, I believe in just war. Combatants can kill combatants. I'm not like Martin Luther King. I'm not a pacifist. But combatants must not kill civilians or innocent people, no matter who it, it is, IDF or Hamas. But the, but the problem is, if you're going to call Hamas a terrorist group and the IDF is killing innocent people, they're terrorists too. If American soldiers kill innocent people, they're terrorists too. We have to be morally consistent in our language, in our deeds. And this is what I pull from Hebrew hey. scripture. This is what I pull from following a Palestinian Jew named Jesus. Hey. Damn. Look, he's right. And I, I don't know, is that the first time in the history of CNN that somebody said the IDF are terrorists? Is that the first time that's happened? It might be. It might be the first time. And, and by the way, okay, so what's the response that you almost always get in this scenario? The response is, and Dana Bash makes this point too, by the way, we can keep it running a little longer in a second, but she's like, but hold on, Hamas intended to kill civilians and Israel does not intend to kill civilians. So the intent here matters. It's the difference between murder and manslaughter. Manslaughter is horrible and bad, but we all agree it's a lesser crime than murder because murder is, you know, intentionally killing somebody, right? But the problem with that is that's not the reality. The reality is um, Hamas killed 55% military targets, 45% civilian targets on October 7th. That 45% civilian targets, unacceptable. Terrorism. I agree. Horrific. Israel has killed about 35,000 innocent Palestinians, 39,000 overall, so some of them are Hamas. 92% innocent civilians thereabouts, according to the Euromed Monitor numbers. 14,000 children. You can't look at a situation where on the one hand, it's 45% civilian kill rate. On the other hand, it's 92% civilian kill rate. And you say, the 45% civilian kill rate, those guys are terrorists who did that. But the ones who killed 92% civilians, uh, they're not terrorists. They meant well. But that, okay. That is just giving into propaganda and bias. And look, it's, I'm not, it's not just Dana Bash. It's everybody in mainstream media in the U.S., everybody in the political establishment in the U.S. The idea is Israel is our ally. Therefore, they mean well by definition. Therefore, any action they might take militarily is by definition defensive. This is how it's viewed. It just happens to be the case that that's not true. How can you say it's defensive when Israel announced a total medieval-style siege? No food, no fuel, no water, no electricity— they shut it down for 2.3 million people. There's only 30,000 Hamas members. So you're starving 2.3 million people, and you have the nerve to say, we're not doing collective punishment. We're not targeting civilians on purpose. My ass cheeks, you're not targeting civilians on purpose. That's the definition of targeting civilians on purpose. When you bomb over 20 hospitals, as they did, you are targeting civilians on purpose. By the way, they come out and say, I don't think there are any innocent civilians in Gaza. So they say... Everybody there is guilty by definition. So how can you turn around and say, uh, you know, that's not terrorism because they didn't mean to do it. But they did. That's what you got to get through your head. They absolutely do mean it. And they've made it very clear with their own language and their own actions. But in the U.S., there's this like massive veil of ignorance where people will not digest the very basic fact that they are doing this on purpose. They're doing an ethnic cleansing and a genocide on purpose. They're trying to resettle North Gaza. All right, let's keep it going. I don't know how much longer we'll go, but I know she does that response that I that I gave of, oh, they don't mean it, and Hamas does. Let's see how he responds. You heard Benjamin Netanyahu uh, on Sunday arguing wholeheartedly that uh, the big difference is that Hamas went out and sought out civilians. What, ID, what the IDF is doing is trying to get rid of Hamas, and the civilians are unfortunately uh, getting killed in the crossfire. I, I'm not I'm not equating the two in terms of life as a life, but the argument is that Hamas sought out civilians and the IDF is not. Well, I mean, the difference there would be, historically, over the last 75 years, we've got overwhelming evidence that the IDF has killed innocent people. And, and, and it's... On purpose. 
on purpose. Killing innocent children right now, and each one of those children are not a shield of a Hamas soldier. So that, that the language yeah. on the one hand goes in one direction, the action goes in another direction. But the crucial thing is we've got to keep the moral and spiritual mm -hmm. issues at the center. And that's one of the problems okay. with American politics I these days. It's all about money. It's all about status and spectacle. What about the human beings who are suffering, so be they mass incarcerated in ghettos or, or, or barrios of poor whites, or be they in Gaza, or be they frightened in other parts of the but, world? So. I mean, look, again, don't take my word for it. Don't take Cornell West's word for it. But there's been a number of uh, different exposés on, for example, that like snuff channel that they have where all the IDF soldiers get in there and they like brag about killing Palestinian grandmas and children. You know, the ones we've seen recently is they take the toys of Palestinian kids who are probably dead and they take pictures with them. Right. They were there's one where they're holding the canes of disabled people who they likely killed or who have fled without their cane, right? Like, this is what this is what we're talking about. You know, they bust up Palestinian shops, people who have nothing to do with Hamas. They just break everything in sight. They're also, uh, you know, attacking in the West Bank, where there is no Hamas, right? It, it, again, the idea that people are still saying at this late date, that, oh, it's just a hunt for Hamas. I don't know how much more evidence you need to know that's bullshit. It's almost like you're, just not looking at any of the evidence. So anyway, um, I think he did a phenomenal job here. He went on CNN and called the IDF terrorists. That's ballsy, and that's true. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.